Greetings and welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you how Kang the Conqueror would solve this year's American Invitational Math Exams Paper 1, Question 6. So Question 6 goes as follows. We are given three red cards and three blue cards, and they'll be revealed to Alice in some random order. And before each card is revealed, Alice must guess its colour. We assume that Alice is some kind of math genius and she's going to play optimally. Her expected result is some fraction m over n. So if you do not know what expected means, basically in math, it's just summing up the product of outcomes times the probability of that outcome. So in this case, we will take the 0 multiplied by the probability that she gets 0 right, plus 1 multiplied by the probability that she only gets 1 right, all the way to 6 multiplied by the probability that she gets all 6 right. So, assuming that m and n are co-prime integers, find the value of m plus n. So you can pause the video here and give this question a good try before having a look at the answer. Now let's take Kang's point of view as he sits outside of time. He is able to see all the possible timelines play out. First, he needs to count how many of them are there. So since we have six cards in total, there will be six factorial permutations. But don't forget, you have to divide by all the identical uh, permutations. So since you have three red cards, and if you permutate the three red cards with one another, there is no difference. So you've got to divide by three factorial for the three red cards, as well as three factorial for the three blue cards. There, for if you calculate this, you'll get 20 possible timelines. Now, Alice, being the math genius, she would go with this strategy. If the probability is even between red and blue, she would just flip a coin and take the 50-50 chance. If one color has a higher frequency, she would go with that color always. So let's look at the first card. Well, Alice has a 50-50 chance since it's a 3-3 split. This splits us down to two timelines, one where she got it correct, one where she got it wrong. But no matter what, it will always be down to a 3-2 split in terms of the colour. And we don't care which one is 3, which one is 2. She will always guess the majority card in the 3-2 split. So her probability of getting it right for the second card will be 3 out of 5. Similarly, it would be 2 out of 5 for her to get it wrong. If she's right, it will go down to a 2-2 split. If she's wrong, it will go down to a 3-1 split. So let's look at what happens at the third card. At the third card, it's almost always that she'll go down to a 2-1 split. And you can see that there are only two timelines where she doesn't go down to a 2-1 split. She'll end up in a lopsided 3-0 split. And a 3-0 split is good for us. It is good for Kang. He no longer needs to monitor this timeline any further because when Alice is down to 3 nil, she will know what the remaining 3 cards are and she will get them right. So in the case of correct wrong wrong, she's going to be followed by 3 more correct, she's going to get 4 cards right. In the case of wrong wrong wrong, she's definitely going to know that the last 3 cards is, was the colour that she has been guessing all this while and she's going to get the last 3 correct. So she's going to get three in total. So let's look at the fourth card. By the fourth card, she's almost always down to a 1-1 one, one split. And in some cases, a 2 nil split. Similarly, a 2 nil split is good for us. We no longer need to monitor this timeline. We know that she knows the remaining two cards. She's going to get the last two correct. And if we look at the fifth card, she's always going to be down to a 1 nil split. At this point of time, you can work out how many she gets correct uh, along the entire timeline. So all we need to do is score all the 20 cases. Now to further convince yourself that this entire probability tree method works, is we can consider if the cases are equally likely because we've considered 20 cases, but are these cases equally likely? Well, they are, and let me convince you. Let's look at a case where she gets it correct six times in a row. 
Well, that probability is half times three fifth times half times two third times half. We just take all the probabilities along that uh, time branch and we multiply them together. It will come out to one out of 20. And let's take the case where she's correct, wrong, wrong, followed by three corrects. It, the probability of that happening is half times two fifth times one quarter. It is also one out of 20. So to work out the expected value, we just need to sum up all the possible outcomes, which is represented by the uh, numbers in those yellow boxes. And we have to divide it by the total number of cases, which is 20. So let's count it up. The number of times that she's right only three times is five. She's correct uh, four times is nine. She's correct five times, there's five of them. And for her to be correct six times, there's only one case. So we take 5 times 3 plus 9 times 4 plus 5 times 5 plus 6 and divide it by 20, you'll get 41 out of 10. And for the purpose of answering the IME question, we need to sum up the numerator and the denominator. So the answer will be 51. And with that, we've come to the end of this quick video on IME question 6. So post in the comment section if you would like me to go through another question. Thank you and have a great day of learning.